welcome to a brand new episode of Pop Culture Planet. I'm your host, Kristen Maldonado. I'm so excited to be bringing you guys my conversation with my girl, Yvette Monreal. She is a superstar. You might know her from Stargirl, Faking It, Rambo Last Blood. And we are diving into everything from her acting resume to being a Latina superhero to Hispanic representation in general. Hope you enjoy our conversation. I saw you at TRL again, and I'm like, man, we've come a long way since faking it. We have, we have. <laughs> oh my god, so much! Like now, you're a Rotten Tomatoes critic. You're a member of Television Academy. Oh, thank you. Like, and please. I mean, look at you. You're a superhero. You know. <laughs> Oh, I'm so happy. Yes, uh, we are We are thriving right now. <laughs> We're thriving in this pandemic. Yes. I thought it'd be really fun, especially for Hispanic Heritage Month to come up, uh, to, to speak with someone who's like actually out there, you know, in the field and, and, you know, just learn a little bit more about like, what has it been like for you and, you know, what you've experienced and, and why representation is so important. I feel like we're seeing it more and more lately, just like the, oh, the isn't that so it. great? It is. Yeah. You know, I want to open up the space, but, um, well, I'm glad that you're doing that. I feel like you're such a go getter. Thank you. Thank you. You as well. You go, girl. <laughs> we get, we got to, right? Like, I feel like that's what I was instilled in growing up. Like, you know, as a, as a Latina, like you got to work harder than everybody else, you know, and you got to prove yourself. And I'm just like, that's, I'm just constantly trying to do that. Yeah. My mom always said, you know, you can't depend on a man. You got to make your own money. Yeah. And that's her way of, you know, that's her thinking and it's implemented on me. I'm like, yeah, make my money, mom. Yeah, let's do it. Exactly. No, but I mean, it's true. Yeah. You don't want to have to rely on anybody. You want to be your own boss, you know? Yeah, I feel like that's really big in the Latin culture, at least for my family. Like, my mom is, like, head of the house. Like, she's, mm -hmm. the, chief. she's the boss and everyone listens to whatever she says. But I know, like, in other traditional um, families, like, the man leads the house. So, mm -hmm. it's, it's, I guess, like, it defers for family. You always want to, you know, have that those strong women in your life, you know, and be those strong women for, for other people. I feel like I'm very close to my mom. Um, I'm close to my Mexican roots. Like, my mom was born in Mexico, and my biological dad was born in Chile, but I was raised with my mom. I grew up with my stepdad. He's from South Dakota, and uh, it was funny because growing up, like, my mom came from Mexico, so she was trying to learn English. Uh, so in the house we would speak a lot of english but she would talk to us in spanish and we would respond in english and so now i don't know i've done spanish interviews before but my spanish has been affected because my mom was, was trying to learn english and i was just responding in uh in english so now i have like a little accent on my on my mexican spanish but it all comes with reason you know what i mean do you ever feel like people kind of like judge you on your Spanish a little bit. Like they just expect you oh to be better God. at it. Yes, I definitely get so like self-conscious about it because just growing up when I wanted to be an actress, like I saw like Gina Rodriguez and like other actresses who would get crap for not really uh, speaking Spanish the correct way. Um, and that kind of bothered me because I'm like, man, they're trying, at, le at least they know. And just because you don't speak uh, Spanish in, in a certain in a certain accent it doesn't make you any less than because I feel like my mother's traditional roots are really ingrained in me to a certain extent you know um, good manners respect was very important to my mom and it was implemented in my life uh, so I feel like just everything tradition with with Christmas and I feel like my roots are there so when I get it like when people say things about my Spanish, it does hurt my feelings. So I'm like, y'all, like, my mom was trying to learn English. That's where it comes from. Or else mm -hmm. I would have been way better at my Spanish. Everybody speaks kind of different Spanish, honestly. My Chilean side has like a TH when they speak. Like, mm -hmm. oh, sí, por, por supuesto. Like, there's more of a TH sound, where my mom is more like, uh, si, sí, no vayas allá. Like, very, like, hard. Yeah. Um, yeah, you're right. There's different dialects in, in um, or different accents in, in, in Spanish. I completely agree with that. Do you speak Spanish? Uh, I want to say like, mm, like really not good. If they had taught me it growing up, I would be great at it. But because I learned it like, you know, in school, 
I feel like by then you're mm. so old that like, you know, I could do the basics if I needed to like, but I don't feel confident, you know? So I, like maybe my Spanish is better than it is, but I don't feel confident in it. But you know, if, if I have a little margarita, then like it starts to come out, you know? <laughs> exactly. That's how I felt when I was doing my Rambo interview. Like they were like, you know, you can do it in English. And I'm like, no, but I want to do it in Spanish. Like, I don't know. I just thought it was, it was more genuine for, for me and for my Latinx community to connect. If, they saw me actually trying and there was an interview where my mom thought it was hilarious uh i was doing an interview with sylvester stallone and he was um he was doing his interview in english and i did it in spanish but i said oh uh el fue como, como mi papá me parió and i guess in spanish my mom said that that means he birthed you like he had <laughs> you through him and i'm like I need to practice a little more, but my mom thought it was the cutest thing. But of course, she's my mother, so who knows what yeah. the public thought? They're probably like this girl. And you gotta remember, like Selena, she didn't speak Spanish, and she tried. I always think of that one, uh, that funny interview, at least in the J Lo uh, movie, where she was like, "Muy, yo soy muy excited," because she's like, "I can't, I can't think of the word." You know, we're trying. It was me against the person who actually got the the film right now for this Netflix series for Selena. Really? Oh my god. I'm so excited for that. So to know that you were you were up there, what what was that like? Like were you, are you like a Selena fan? Oh yeah. I mean, we grew up on Selena. I mean I feel like she was one of the first like Latinas that I saw on screen. Like I watched that with my mom and I was super young. It made me feel like that movie itself made me feel like I was able to like accomplish whatever I wanted. Um like the family dynamic re reminded me a lot of my own family. Like Selena had a brother and a, sis and a sister that she was really close with and she grew up with. And she was kind of the baby of the house and that's kind of how I was. And yeah. her dad was in a band and my stepdad was in a band. And I just saw a lot of similarities and a lot of myself in that story. And my, my love for animals was like through the roof. Like I had a duck as a pet, I had dogs, mice, like water frogs. I had like random pets. <laughs> the best so i i definitely saw myself in that movie and it it made me feel like oh man if she could do it i could do it i didn't want to be a singer i just wanted to be an actress but it movies like that like inspired me so much and i also would watch a lot of um novelas with my mom mm -hmm. like growing up <laughs> i was like this like eight-year-old little girl and i would i would watch novellas with my mom my favorite show I don't know if you ever watched novellas, did you? Growing Not up? really, no. <laughs> well, there's this one show, it's called Amigos y Rivales. Mm -hmm. I was obsessed with the intro. Like it was like, oh, wow, yo, Amigas y Rivales. And I watched that whole thing. And I, there were so many um, beautiful, smart, and Latin women who were carrying the show. So I always saw myself in them and it made me feel like, oh, I could do that. I could do so much more. You know, I, yeah. I feel like I, I, I did see a lot of female leads though in my mom's novelas on you know telemundo then in shows that i was watching in english like disney or anything like that i think the first latinx uh character that i saw in disney that i identified with was like uh selena gomez from wizards of waverly place yeah yeah oh, i was like oh okay uh i think she's latina i think uh, that means i could do it too like it made me feel like things <laughs> were gonna happen for me yeah. yeah. So is, is that kind of like telenovelas and stuff where your kind of like love of enter entertainment came from? Or like, did you always think about acting? Or where did that kind of inspiration come from? So we would watch this show with my stepdad called Mad TV. Did you ever get into that? Yes, I loved Mad TV. <laughs> Funniest show. Yes. Okay. It was so funny. Like, if you guys look up clips, like, that show is so funny. Do you remember Stuart? I literally was just thinking, Stuart, Stuart, yes. I don't want it, I don't want it. Yeah. Want it. Yeah. So, so good. So, good. so anyway, the characters um, that were on that show, my sister and I, we would imitate their work and we would just make my mom and dad laugh and laugh because they, they just loved seeing us like act out like these characters and they knew them so well. It was like a family thing that we did. So that made me want to keep entertaining because I was just the biggest goofball like as a kid and I just wanted to make my mom laugh and I mean I'm more in the action drama now but comedy I I would want to dip into that but yeah that's where it comes from it just comes from being 
silly and just being accepted by my parents and them wanting to see more of like me being goofy and I would do off the wall stuff, like just anything for a laugh. It was, it was really fun, but it, it made me feel good at the same time. So I don't know. I think it's just from, from growing up and just having parents who were like, you know, my stepdad was in a band. So he was just like, yeah, I bet you want to be an actress. Do it. You can do it. Honestly, I like connect to that. Like my family is very musical. I grew up doing musical theater and my mom put us in that kind of stuff because, you know, I was really shy growing up and, you know, I was always like, you know, singing in the shower, but not really like, oh my gosh, like the quarantine especially is like, just like, making me go back to my theater roots. It's like my, my uh, self-care. <laughs> oh, can I hang out with you? Because I want theater roots. I did do theater in um, in high school, but I feel like they could be stronger. Oh, I hear you. I, I did it all like outside of school because I, you know, like I said, it wasn't like, I was very shy, but then outside of school is kind of where I made my friends and kind of got into like entertainment and things like that. But I love that, you know, like having, I feel like a lot of Latin families are very creative, you know, there's everyone's playing music. I was super shy growing up too like there was like ins and outs like socially i wasn't like if i didn't have a crush or on anyone or anything like i wasn't shy but if it was like my crush i was extremely shy you mentioned that um one of the first times that you saw you know like latinx characters on screen were you know the telenovelas lena gomez and you said that that kind of made you feel like you know i could do that too um what do you think it was about those like characters or those those actors that made you feel like really empowered? Little by little, I was seeing more and more of myself on screen, just subconsciously. And at first I thought like, you have to be perfect to be on TV. You have to be perfect to be in movies. Mm -hmm. I was with Disney kids who like, it was the littlest thing, like they had freaking teeth and it made me feel like, oh, that's not like socially, it's not perfect, so maybe, maybe since I'm not perfect, I can do TV too. And it was also my mom. Honestly, it's the support of your, like my mom, my parents. My mom was the one who put me in drama classes in high school. Um, I had went to live with my dad, my biological dad in Orange County for a year. And when I came back, um, she was picking my electives for me. And she was like, oh, look, drama. You love drama. You love to be silly. You love to act. And I'm like, no, like, I want to be cool, mom. Like, and she was like, you bet if you can't do it in front of high school kids, you're not going to be able to do it in front of the whole world. So that kind of, for some reason, that just resonated so much because I would go to, I would go to bed thinking like, oh, I wonder what it's going to be like in the future when I'm an actress. Like I would think those things. Like, what am I going to be doing? What projects am I going to be working on? So at that point, I was like, she's right. Like I need to just throw some pelotas and just do it, you know what I mean? Um, and I signed up for drama class and my mom was the one who kind of gave me that push. And after after high school was over, um, I was working part-time jobs and I was actually going to school for special effects, believe it or not. Oh, wow. Like, there was this uh, system called Houdini. And I don't know if you ever saw like the Katy Perry like fireworks video, like, hey, there you are, pa. Mm -hmm. um, they used the Houdini program to do those fireworks. and. Oh, um, my wow. teacher at the time worked at Sony, and she was like, "If any of you, if I'll, if any of you uh, ace this class and are interested in getting a position at my work, they're hiring." So I was like, "Wow, that's kind of like a shoe in." Um, but as I started working more and more on projects, it just didn't feel like the passion wasn't as wasn't there, mm -hmm. and I just felt like I want to be in front of the camera, you know. So I started saving up my own money. I got headshots. I, I didn't really know what I was doing, but I was trying to figure it out. I signed up on classes and I went to this acting school that's Stella Adler based mm -hmm. and um, just started learning. Just like, I was like, you know what? I don't know what I'm doing, but I know the more knowledge I have about acting and everything, it's going to get me somewhere. So totally. yeah, at the end of that, I did a conservatory there. And at the end of that, that's where I met my manager and we started working together. And then that later on got my agent, but I, it was really hard for me to get an agent at first or a manager. Like I would submit myself and I had no luck. So I was doing it myself. Like I would submit myself and do like sh student films, like short films. I did a short film and that's what got me my SAG. Okay. Oh my gosh. But looking back, <laughs> it was so much work 
I'm like, man, I don't know if I'd do that again. Like, <laughs> you know, if I was young, maybe, but it was a lot, a lot of work. I don't even know how, how, how I got to where I am, honestly. It was just like, you have to just look at one foot in front of the other. You can't think of the like, big goal. Just keep hustling, just keep working. Yeah. Focus on those little short goals that get you to the bigger goal. Absolutely. Now, do you remember what your first, like, you know, big audition experience was like? When I was submitting myself and just trying to get things for a reel, uh, I was very camera shy. Like, it went in and out, like I said. Like, I was very camera shy. I would forget my lines. Uh, but as time went on, I started getting annoyed of myself. I'm like, Yvette, like, you need to book something because you need a reel to get a manager or an agent. Like, I started getting annoyed with myself. So um, I ended up booking, like, a, a little uh, – a little short film on that came from USC and I became like long-term friends with those people. And I chose schools specifically that focused on film like USC and UCLA because I knew, okay, these people are spending a lot of money going to this school. I know I'm gonna get something for my reel. Like that's how I was thinking, like I need footage, I need footage. And then once I finally got the footage and mm -hmm. I met with my manager there, like we loved how proactive you were. Like you're so proactive you just like want to be seen. So if anything, if I have any advice for for young upcoming actors who don't know what to do, like I would say, just try to get as much footage of yourself as you can because people want to see that you're actually active in the in this field. First audition, I actually remember it was it was uh, for this movie. It was called Runaway, and I actually booked it. It was really cool. My role was written for a white girl because it said like uh, I had green eyes and blonde hair, but they said they were they were, they were were seeing everybody. And uh, the director loved me so much. He wanted me to read for the, for the lead role. They're like, can we, can we have her, can we have her read for the lead role? And they're like, we already cast the mom. The mom has blonde hair and you know, so it, it didn't, uh. but that was like such a good experience for me. I was like, wow. So, even if like these roles are written one way, like it can always change. Because I would get discouraged sometimes when I would go out, go out for certain things and it wasn't my exact description. Mm -hmm. This isn't me. This isn't what, like they're like, don't even think, don't think about that. Like just do a good job. You can always shift their, their mind. That's it like really inspiring to like know, you know, that like, you know, even if it seems like, oh, they only are looking for blonde girls, you know, there's still a chance that like, things could switch. For sure, yeah, when they start like seeing other options, like they could just be like, oh, this is it. Like she doesn't have to be blonde or blue eyed or, you know, whatever, whatever, it could be diverse. Have you ever dealt with any experiences uh, while auditioning where people were just like really stereotypical about how they wanted you to portray a role or they just were very limiting in how um, they were kind of seeing certain characters? Definitely in the beginning, I feel like when I was fighting to just get in the room, like I just wanted to act. So I was basically going out for anything and everything. Um, there were a few roles that were stereotyped, like, but I just wanted to work. So um, it didn't matter to me at the time. And initially, like, I think it didn't bother me because I didn't associate the description like as a negative, uh, like if that makes any sense. but. I mean, I was lucky to play some like diverse and edgy roles, but I never wanted to be pigeon health. I think I was very naive too. Like my parents were just like, yeah, you can do it. Wow, a stripper, that's great. Like <laughs> they were just excited. They were just excited. And my my uh, my mom's side of the family is uh, very uplifting and kind of just silly. They're very silly people. Like they're like, oh, we can't wait till you like grow up and be a stripper. But it was, it's total jokes. It's all mm -hmm. jokes. Yeah, yeah. So, I think the fact that they were so lighthearted and they never took anything so serious, it made me not ever be offended by by things that were described that way. But now I, I totally see, like, you can't, you can't do that. But mm -hmm. I think it's because I never associated it with negative. Now, I'd love to talk through some of your roles. I feel like you've had um, so many fun ones, so many different ones. Would you want to start with something like Shoots? Shoots is cool because those are the same people who cast me for uh, this short film that I did, and that helped me get my SAG eligibility. 
and they came back to me and they're like, hey, we want to see you for this project. I've worked with them a total of three times, which oh, is wow. really cool. I'm like, just go out there, put yourself on Actors Access and like submit yourself because you make these connections and sometimes they're long term and it, it, it just becomes like family, you know, yeah. like working with these people over and over again. I feel like it's such a compliment when they call me back for different roles. I'm like, oh, they see that. They see I could do different things. It's just such a good compliment. But anyway, going back, yeah, Shoots was cool. It was kind of like a YouTube series. It was something they were testing out. They didn't really know what they wanted to do with it yet. I think eventually they wanted to turn it into a movie, but it didn't pan out. Then I played uh, Matador. I played Alfred Molina's daughter. Um, the original breakdown of that one was a cute bag of trouble relishes her every opportunity to play rough in bed with soccer players and get herself or either them in trouble. Ooh. Yeah, so it's really cool though because that kind of description gives you, it doesn't, it's not really a description of what she looks like. It's more of a, it's based off of like, what is, what is this person gonna build based off of what characteristics we've given her. So it was really cool. I didn't have to go in feeling like, oh, I have to do my hair a certain way or I have to dress a certain way. Um, I was able to build it on my own. And it was funny because they kept asking me my age. They were like, how old is she? And they're like, she's, she's 21. Like, she's good. You know, she's fine. And they're like, okay, because she looks really young. She looks really young to be playing this role. With those Latina jeans, I get that too all the time. <laughs> I suppose Latina's jeans, girl. I'm yeah, sorry. we just, we look young. Yeah, star girl. I'm, I'm in high school, so. Yeah, it's yeah. A gift. It's a gift to be able to keep playing these roles, but who knows? As long as I can, I can resonate to it, to the, to the character, and it speaks to me, then I, I'll play whatever, whatever they believe I am. That character, what we were talking about, Matador, Matador. Uh, she was a really special uh, one for me because. I don't know. She was one of my favorite characters to play. Um, you know, I was a person of color representing Latinas. Um, but I, I don't know. I just love the whole dynamic of being a drug lord's daughter. Is this, is this okay to say? Because this yeah. is how I really feel. It was one of the first edgy roles that I got to play. And I, it was cool because they, they, they kind of meshed what they first thought Senna was going to be like into what Yvette is. And they kind of made them blend. And she wasn't as um, one-dimensional as, as it came across in the beginning. Like, they really gave her layers. And it was really fun to play Alfred Molina's daughter, too, by the way. I learned so much from him. He is the best TV dad ever. Was there anything in particular that you're just, like, that stuck with you from working with him? I just remember little moments, like, of him just taking his time and really, like, being in the moment. And just his acting style and his cadence with everything, I just, those are things that I remember. It's not really like something he said or something he did. It was more like little moments that I spent time with him on set and and it's more like picture memory. Like observing and seeing how he, his method kind of thing. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, and then after Matador, um, I had, I had Faking It. Yeah. And it, yeah, you interviewed me on the first. Yeah. Um, I think that was like my first interview. By the way, really? Oh yeah, that my was goodness. my first like online interview. I was so nervous. I'm honored. I remember, like, writing everything down. I'm like, okay, what do I, what do I say to this person? It was, and I had just taken a shower. I remember my sh my hair was so wet. I'm crossing my fingers for Remy. What was your favorite scene to film? My favorite scene to film was I was the Fifth Harmony. Uh, episode ecstasy and the agony that one was so fun you know everyone was just great on set there was really good energy really high energy um the girls did an amazing performance here we are again here we are again years Next later time. so that role um it was described as like a hip edgy lesbian with a rebellious streak i went up against all ethnicities uh and i tested with about like 14 other girls in the chemistry read with rita volk oh it. wow Okay. Yeah, so I just remember sitting in those chairs. It was like a, we were all lined up in these chairs waiting to go in this room. And I was like, there's no way I'm going to get it. There's so many girls. Like, there's so many girls. Oh, wow. So I kind of just, if anything, that grounded me a little more because I'm like, 
what do I have to lose? Like, if it's not mine, it's not mine kind of thing. And I really like that character. I loved being a part of picking it because I felt that show really helped introduce audiences to inclusive storytelling. And I know Carter Cummington was um, able to develop complex, unique stories within each of us, you know, and it really colored our characters' personalities. Um, and it was really special to him. I remember him bringing us over to his house and just having us watch the episodes with him. And he's just so excited. And I heard like rumors about the mayor of Hollywood giving them the key. But I was like, wow, this show is really making moves. And really, that show is really about like being inclusive. So it felt so good to be about be a part of something like that. I really like Bailey DeYoung's role. Yeah, she was she was a lot she of was, fun. So, she was one of my favorites for and, sure. I mean, you know, working on the show, everybody loved you and Amy. Honestly, I don't know if I had ever seen another like Latina lesbian on screen before. You know, I'm trying to think and like I can't think of any. So I just felt like it was really groundbreaking and I think that, you know, people people loved you in that role. How was it when it ended? Were you like so sad about it because I know you took care of a lot of the social like the social media stuff and just yeah yeah like I was I was really sad that was the first scripted show I'd worked on I had done mostly like reality tv so um you know it just I feel like there's a different connection that you feel because you I don't know have this connection to the story and these characters as it's as it's building I know I'm sure for everyone else it was their child you know but like for me like socially uh, like working on social media like it was my child and um you know, I had gotten so many amazing opportunities. You know, that show that we did um, where they let me interview you, they like, I pitched and wrote and um, and basically like helped produce that whole thing. And like, that was my idea because I know the fans were were really like hungry for something like that. Like they wanted to talk That's about the show. So cool. uh, and it was, it was, that was like one of the coolest things I got to do <laughs> at MTV, I feel like so. So you pitched the show. You are filming it better. Oh my gosh. Yeah, we filmed it at my desk. That was my actual real desk that I sat at every day. You've come such a long way. Thank you. That is Thank so you. awesome. Oh my gosh, you're inspiring me. Stop, you're inspiring me. Oh, <laughs> was it for the Fosters? Oh, it was the Fosters. Yes. Yeah. A little a stint on the Fosters. And it's funny because Meg DeLacy is on the Fosters and now I work with her and we're like the closest ever. We're actually awesome. house shopping right now because we're gonna go shoot soon. So um, we're gonna be roomies. The Fosters was really fun. I remember going in and I auditioned for it. It was really quick. It was like one of the fastest auditions. Usually if it's like that, I, I'm not used to getting it, like getting auditions that they're like, wow, that was really good. Okay, thank you. Bye. And I'm like, cool. Oh. <laughs> so yeah, like, I guess they didn't want to see more because usually they'll ask you to do it a different way, and that's usually a good sign, at least for me. Mm -hmm. um, but then they called me and they said they wanted to book me, so I was super excited, and I was able to uh, play Sierra Ramirez's cousin. And I remember the description just being like, happy, go giddy, like playful cousin who works at. Um, a restaurant with her grandfather and uh it was it was very short-lived I, I didn't really put too much work into that just because it was like i thought i was just being a guest star it, it was described as guest star possible reoccurring with the fosters role i kind of just went based off of like oh this is very familiar to me i'm hispanic i feel like i see myself in this role it's, there's not there wasn't like too much to it i really loved when they um brought the churro dynamic in because <laughs> I grew up on those. Yes. Oh. Cinnamon. Oh my gosh. Churro. What is it? Ch -ch 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 churro. I think we need a song in the box <laughs> about churros and I appreciate that because I love them so much. Uh, delicious. But, um, yeah, I felt like it was very familiar to me. It was me with my family. Do you watch your your roles? Like do you watch yeah. how do you feel like after you after you see what what has come out of you know, what you've done. I mean, I could be a harsh critic, but I'm like, damn, I could have done something there. Or like, I could have done something exciting there. I, I critique myself, but also it's like, what's done is done, I have to accept it and kind of just move forward. But it's really fun. It's really fun to see. I actually enjoy seeing myself on screen. I know I have some friends who don't like to watch themselves and I don't know why, but I like it because I kind of learn from it. I learn from the choices that I'm making and Especially with Stargirl, because Stargirl, I, I act with a mask on. 
So mm. yeah, it's on TV and everything. I'm kind of, and I was watching the, each episode with everyone else. So I was able to see how I was acting with my mask on. I'd never acted with a mask on. That's really interesting. Yeah, like my eyebrows, if I'm like, like you could tell I'm scared, but if I'm like with a mask on, I'm like, yeah, there's, yeah. No, there's no reaction. The next one, would that be um, Rambo? Oh, okay, so my next film was Rambo, and that was a big one. Okay, so that role was described as virtuous, supportive. Uh, I was the one that helped take care of Rambo, and I look up to him as a protector. Um, they actually warned me, too, in the script when they had sent the audition. Uh, they said that the character goes through a lot of distress, mm -hmm. and I didn't realize it at the time, but it definitely like did have some long-term effects on me. Like, really? Yeah, just because of all my research I did. I mean, nothing, nothing like terrible, but I do always think of like sex trafficking is always going through my mind now, even when I'm out, if I'm at Trader Joe's or if I'm like at a CVS, whatever. If anyone's like staring at me too long, I don't think like, oh, he probably thinks I'm attractive or whatever. Like, I think like, oh my God, are they trying to kidnap me? Like those oh, thoughts no. really go through my mind. And I, I'm like, why do I think about this so much? But then again, I was watching lots and lots of documentaries on human trafficking. And just because that, that was a major part of what I went through, that wasn't, you know, there's a lot of action for Rambo and stuff, but human trafficking was a big, 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 big part. And I had to do my research and it was just, I mean, that's, it's, it's crazy that it's real and that, Sex tra like the way sex trafficking is handled, like this is actually someone's life. You know what I mean? It's really, really traumatizing. Like I can't imagine that. So I think that's why I get so scared when I go out. And it, it really made me open my eyes. I felt like I was very naive before and I didn't really watch out for things like that. And I think like now, especially with social media, it's becoming more prominent in like everyone's lives. And I have friends sending me things like, hey, make sure you lock your car or you do this or that because this happened and they show me stories and I'm like, wow, people can be so sneaky. And it's yeah. very, very big in the U S sex trafficking. Wow. And I had no idea. And it, that movie kind of just showed me a whole nother life. And I mean, I'm glad I'm grateful for everyone who was a part of it, but it was crazy. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure you learned a lot. Do you do uh, usually like a lot of research for for certain roles, or um, was this one that you had to do like kind of a, a lot more research than normal? I had a lot of time uh, on my own for that one for Rambo, so I was trying to get the most realistic effect for the movie. You know, I wanted the the trauma to seem real. I wanted the the fighting to, to be very real and screaming and just everything. So I, I just wanted it to be as realistic as possible. Uh, so I did do a lot of documentaries. Um, I researched because my character in that role, she, uh, one parent died from cancer and the other one just left her at a young age at six mm -hmm. or seven. So she was on a search for her dad. And I looked up a lot of uh, documentaries as to why kids or how kids feel when they have parents but they are missing their biological parents and I mean it was, yeah it was a lot of it was a lot of reading about that and and watching documentaries and I love I'm more of a visual learner so I like to watch things but uh but yeah and Sylvester Stallone really helped with everything because you know his whole history is about action film mm -hmm. so if anything needed to be altered or like, hey, he would always just give tips, you know, like, hey, you should, you know, say that a little more quietly if, you, if you're talking to your dad. You know, it was just like actor on actor, like giving me tips just because he had, he had been through so many action films. Like he knows, he knows his stuff. So, wow. so yeah, it was great. It was like a team effort, you know. That must be so exciting to work with someone with such a vast history and like especially in a specific genre that you can really like kind of pick their brain or kind of see how do they do all this yeah he talked a lot of experiences on rocky and mm -hmm. how it was such a low budget film and there's this one scene like at the ice skating rink 
where there was supposed to be a bunch of extras around and he was supposed to uh, take the girl out on a date. But because like none of the extras showed up, whoever was taking care of production and like the extras, they were like, hey, so we only have like a couple people who showed up as, as extras. And he's like, oh, that's fine. Like just bring them in. And he thought it was like a bunch of, you know, maybe like 50, you know, like there's supposed to be 200, but okay, only 50 came. He's like, no, like literally only a couple showed up. And it was, oh, there, there was like three to five. And so he's like, okay, we can't do that. Um, we're going to change the scene. So the scene was that the ice skating rink was closing and it was just them two on the ice skating rink. So I feel like that is so creative and it was so cool to be around someone who had been through so much in their life and film and just sharing all these experiences because he is someone who has a lot of passion still in his films and when he's making them that it made me feel like it just made me feel like I was in the right place and also it made me more excited about my future projects and like how I'm going to handle myself as I go forward you know that's awesome that's so like it like inspiring and like you know just makes you feel like oh, I'm doing the right thing I'm in the right place yeah. I remember someone telling me in high school that Oh, this is the reason why I went into special effects. There was someone uh, who had worked in stunts, and he was now a drama teacher at a different school, and he came to tell us about his experience as stunts, you know, as a stuntman and everything. And he was like, I haven't seen any of your guys' work, but you have a better chance at winning the lottery than you do making it as, an, as a working actor. And that scared the shit out of me. I was like... I can't have that uncertainty, you know, like I want something where I can actually like, okay, I'm going to be in a production company. I'm going to be, you know, safe. Mm -hmm. I want to feel safe, you know? And he actually came up to me and he was like, you, why should I hire you instead of all these other people? And I was like, because I know stuff behind the camera. I don't even remember my full answer, but I just remember him picking me. I was like, wow, out of all people, he's going to pick me. Mm -hmm. And uh, it just really scared me. It's really scary when people have, like, when there's other people kind of asserting themselves and being like, you're not going to make it. It just feels like, oh, he's right. He's been in that industry, so I'm going to believe him, especially when you're young. You know, you're influenced a lot. That can be really tough. Like, I've definitely had people say to me, I don't think you have the right look to, like, be on camera like or, or you know, do stuff like this. And I'm like, it just, to me, it just makes me think, like, Screw you. I'm going to do it anyway. Good for you. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. I hate when people, when people make it seem like, you know, they know what you can do and they don't even know you. Why even listen to someone who isn't striving for goals the way you are? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like usually it's people who, who aren't trying to be an actor, aren't trying to be a host. Like they really like are comfortable just being wherever they want and that's fine like like i told my mom i was like if i wanted to be a doctor i'd be going to school studying my ass off like i would be doing all these things to be the best doctor in the world be doing all these internships mm -hmm. but what i wanted to do was be an actor and that's why i put all my energy and effort and schooling into that because i wanted to be eventually like one of the best you know mm -hmm. so yeah you have to you have to be careful with who you surround yourself with because i think that's that's super important too, like who you surround yourself with because if you have a lot of negative nancies and they're like why are you still doing that or why are you doing this like always questioning your goals like you need other people who are who are right there at that level and some who are like a little further so you can look up to them and and they show you it's possible and i think that's the whole thing totally. with what i'm doing like i am now a superhero on star girl and i'm yes. like one of the I'm one of the only Latina superheroes on network television right now, from what I've heard, from what yeah. people told me. I really, really do feel so lucky to be able to represent for the Mexican heritage and just being a Latina and having other little kids like look up and be like, wow, like she looks like me. Like that's the best feeling. And I know a lot of people talk about it, but it's true. Yeah. And in, in different ways, like, you know, I, I don't know many. Latino superheroes, you know, but I can't think of many, you know, and I feel like a lot of the roles you've played are, are roles that I haven't seen before, um, at, at least in terms of Latinos playing them. And I think that that's so inspiring because then it makes you think like, 
yeah, you can, you can do that. Like there are people like this. There are, you know, you can be a superhero. I mean, Everyone just, deserves to see their own skin color and successful positions. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I mean, since you mentioned Stargirl, can, can you tell us about, about how that all came about? Oh my gosh. Okay. So I was already filming Rambo at the time. The role I was going out for was Tammy and she was vigilant, active and determined. Um, and it, the description kind of talked about how she was, uh, con how she considered herself a champion of her generation, but like suffered a humiliating social setback. So she kind of like withdrew and became like insecure and unsure shadow of herself. Uh, and she was struggling to find her voice again. I feel like when I went into acting, I didn't want to always just play the same thing over and over again. And I feel like I've been able to like diversify my roles a little bit like even though some were hispanic or somewhere like i feel like i've had a good uh i've i have a good resume like i'm really happy with what i've done so far and absolutely um, you should be proud of yourself yeah for sure i'm super proud of myself but i didn't know that i was going out for for wildcat i had to kind of figure it out on the sides on my um on my audition sides they had mentioned like wildcat in one of the words and i'm like i wonder if that's a superhero that i'm gonna be so i looked it up and my team was also trying to figure out too like who i was just so we could be more specific when i walked into the room mm -hmm. and i was right so i was actually filming rambo at the time and i i had an audition a month passed i was in spain shooting they called me for a call back and they're like, oh, she's shooting Rambo right now. Like, she can't. And they hung up, called back, and they're like, okay, we want to send her straight to test. And I was like, oh, it felt so good. I'm like, me? <laughs> That's so awesome. Like, yeah, so I basically just had a tape, retape again, and I had a conversation with Jeff Johns and Melissa Carter about the character. And I was like, so do you guys want me to do anything different? Like, do you see, like, what, like, what do you want? Like, and he was like, nope, just tape it again. He's very much about like letting you make your own choices mm -hmm. unless they're super off, but he likes seeing like what you bring to the table. And um, I was like, okay, great. So I went to this Bulgarian casting director and uh, she could barely speak English. And I had to tape it with her because she was the only one who had like a studio and could speak English. Like everyone else was Bulgarian. Mm -hmm. So uh, I did the tape and I sent it in and I got booked off the tape and it was really great because now I'm here. Yeah. Yeah, that's so exciting. And it's a great family too. I love, love, love my cast. I love them so much. Like I've never felt more close to people than this show. And it's cool because we get to continue. This is why I love being a, being a part of a show. Like you can continue the story with them and it's like not just like you work on a movie and then you go back home and like you see each other sporadically. This is your first series regular role, yeah. right? This is so yeah. exciting. Wow. I'm so excited. I know. This is honestly like a dream come true. Like I'm living my dream right now. Based off of what I've seen of the episodes, you are like really fighting and, and like it looks awesome. Did you have to like train for that? Is there any like stunt doubles or are you doing like most of your own stunts in the show? So the wire work, basically when I'm up in the sky and up on walls and stuff, um, I did have a stunt double for that. Uh, when I'm punching like the punching bag, I did get a trainer for that. I got a trainer a month in advance just so that I could have a good foundation. We also had uh, Walter Garcia. He helped me set up a good foundation also on like my stance and everything and how I should position myself when I'm boxing. Um, when I'm doing that scene in episode four, I just posted it on my Instagram too. Like that little like. Yeah, yeah. I've seen that. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I've had so many compliments on that. You don't know how good that feels because it was something that made me nervous. I'm like, I just always want to do the characters justice, you know? Mm -hmm. I want to be able to portray them authentically. If I don't know how to box, it's going to come across because the camera picks up everything. Mm -hmm. So I knew I had to get in the gym. I had to get a personal trainer and like just train so that I could at least like hit the punching bag uh, good and make it look realistic. I think you did a great job. You know, you really look like you're you got the moves So do, and stuff like that. Does it does it like make you want to like, I don't know, learn these skills and you know keep going with it so that you can like take on more literally right before the pandemic i was going to uh train like do stunt training 
um, I wanted to be able to do more of my stunts, more of my own stunts. Like, obviously, there's certain things that they just can't let you do. Like safety stuff. Yeah, like, if I was high on a wire and I fell off, like, and broke my back, that they can't, like, they can't use me anymore. So there's certain things I was absolutely not able to even touch um, unless it was trick. Like, there's some things, like, the wall thing. Mm -hmm. It had, like, a flat wall, like, on the floor, laying down, and I was crawling on the wall, and it was flat. So... Yeah, so there's there are certain tricks that they were able to do so that they get my face. Mm -hmm. And also, when I was hanging off the wall, that was me. But mm -hmm. I did have my son do, double do a lot of the cool tricks. I was gonna do stunt training because I accidentally punched someone in the face when I was uh, when I was doing like episode thirteen, I think. I don't remember. It was that big fight where like we're both jumping against each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Like the ISA and the JSA, we were both going against each other and I accidentally hit one of my co-stars I punched him in the face and I was like oh I'm gonna get training for this so I don't do that again <laughs> you're like I'm after sorry that, <laughs> after that they wouldn't let me do my own punches they thought I was gonna punch joy oh no <laughs> um, that was an accident I won't do it again now I'm just kind of working out on my own just because we do go back soon that's exciting so is there anything you can tell us about the upcoming season? Ooh, I don't know. What I can say is, I know they're so top secret with the with the superhero shows. Um, what I can say is that Yolanda is going to have to deal with a lot of the trauma um, that she dealt with, like killing Henry's dad. It's going to be weighing heavy on her. And I'm going to be dealing with that a lot in season two. We don't always see people of color in this superhero space. I think now we're starting to see it with your role. Um, you know, Marvel's been doing a lot of stuff where they're including, um, you know, like with Eternals and uh, the new Shang film that they're working on. Like, you know, we're going to get an Asian superhero. They've dived into like Miles Morales as like, you know, um, Spider-Man um, and stuff, which is really exciting. But I think what's so interesting is that like a lot of times people don't think that like, women or people of color are interested in superhero stuff or sci-fi stuff or comic mm -hmm. books. Um, and so I think it's so great to see a, a character like yours where like, it's like, no, look, like, like you said, like Latinos can be superheroes, you know, like we are in this space. We like this space too, you know? And also it's like the U S like the Latino population is at 52 million and counting, you know, like that's a huge audience to appeal to. Latinos account for like half of the US population. So, I mean, people need to be able to identify with themselves. Like, there's so many of us. Yes, yes. Bring <laughs> us more, bring us more. No, I know, I'm so excited. You know what though? When I auditioned for Stargirl, I was really glad that they honored Wildcat as being Mexican because there were other people who went out for the role who weren't Mexican. It would have bummed me out if someone would have got it and, you know, the representation would have been there, but it got taken away. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, absolutely. I feel really proud to represent, and I'm happy with everyone in my cast, and everyone's great. Yeah. I love them. That's so fun when you're like, you can have that family, and you know, and then, you know, like you said, keep coming back for, you know, more seasons and just keep building the stories. And I mean, to me, that's why I personally just really connect with television because I feel like you really get to keep building the story and you have time to like get to know everyone and, you know, really fall in love with these characters in this world. Mm -hmm. Did you um, read the, the Wildcat comics? Definitely. Yeah. I, I read the comic books. Um, in the comics, she's more of a reporter and she's a little older and she gets killed by Eclipso. So I hope that doesn't happen. Um, but I know they're starting in the show. They're starting much younger, and uh, there's more. There's more to her. There's more vulnerability. There's more strength. And you know, I love that they incorporated the family aspect to everything. They gave every character like a good background so that people could like attach themselves to us. You know, because I, I come off really hard in the beginning, and I'm. I'm angry all the time and nobody knows why until my episode four comes out and it kind of explains how, yeah, I come from a tough Latinx background and my parents aren't happy with me and, you know, I'm being shamed for it. It's not, it's not a good thing that I did and they're letting me know. So it's kind of like I made my bed and now I lie in it. And I think in the beginning she, she really, really, just accepted the fact like no what I did was wrong like I'm a bad person now until she meets Courtney and Courtney is like the first person who actually 
has her side, has her back, and is like, and Yolanda's for the first time, she's like, wow, like no one's agreed with me. Everyone's been calling me a slut. My own family is calling me a slut. I think when her peers and her family are both agreeing and are on the same level, like she feels so alone. Mm-hmm. That when Courtney comes, it's like, wow, like this is my new family and this is who I trust now. Yeah. And I mean, you guys got a great girl squad going on. Oh, um, yeah. And I think that that's a really empowering story to be able to see a different perspective on the situation that your character is going through because. Um, you know, a lot of the, a lot of times, um, women are shamed for things that are not their fault. They didn't do anything wrong. And so to be able to see that kind of twist on the story of like her realizing she has people on her side, that's, that's a really great message, I think, for women. For sure. You don't know how many comments and like DMs I've got where people are like, oh, this is, this show is very eye opening. Like I had no idea with social media how it could really get to people. And there's talks that I've had with my daughters about like what the word slut means. Like it's harsh that our, our show kind of is presenting this kind of stuff, but it's also like the reality. This is what kids do go through and what they might experience. So if you tackle it beforehand, it doesn't have to, it doesn't have to become like a depression or you don't have to feel alone. Like I think it's, I love that our show is like really family oriented because it does tackle real issues that people and kids and teens are dealing with. And it kind of makes people come together and makes you realize, okay, like this is how our world is now. Cause social media is a big part of our world now, like TikTok, Instagram, oh, yeah. that's where everybody is getting their influences from. Just have to be careful, you know? Absolutely. We've been talking a lot about representation um, and you know, how inspiring your roles have been. What do you think that, people can do to kind of bring more awareness to, you know, diversity and inclusion and representation, um, whether it's in the Latinx community or even in other communities. First things first, like educating yourself on other people's cultures is, is number one. Just because like, I don't know, there's so much judgment. I just remember when my mom has felt this way. She's like, oh, I don't want to go because the color of my skin is too dark. Like they're going to talk about me and stuff like that. And it just made me feel like, mom, you're beautiful. Like, but obviously she had gone through things in the past that made her feel that way. So I feel like if you just educate yourself on other people's cultures and and how people are, and I don't know, knowledge is key. Knowledge is power. So, I mean, it's so easy too now. Like there's Google, there's, there's YouTube. I feel like educating yourself is one. I think that's definitely key. And I think just the fact that like we are starting to see more diversity in roles, I just feel like that in itself also can be educating, you know, to see yeah. different types of um, relationships and um, backgrounds portrayed on screen. It kind of like can be really eye opening, even if it's just like that first step to being like, oh, wait, let me learn more about this. Um, but it, it's amazing, you know, how much pop culture and entertainment and film and television really shapes our world. So, seriously, yeah. yeah. I think just the more we get that stuff out there and, you know, whether it's on screen, behind the scenes um, and telling those authentic stories, it just feels like, um, you know, the, the more you learn, the more you can be accepting of other people. I love what our show did. Like it, even if it was just for my one episode of them showing the, like that Hispanic background, my mom actually really resonated with that. She really could identify with it. And, um, I mean, not saying that that she would have been as harsh, but she was like, that's kind of how I grew up. Like some people on social media were, because I do read the comments and I want to see like if fans are enjoying the show. And there were some comments who were like, why is her family like so old school? Like so back in the day, like this isn't relevant. This isn't how things are. But it's like, yes, they are. There are still people who are traditional and people who are like raised with their grandparents or their moms who are, you know, from Mexico like it's a reality that not everybody goes through so I feel like they don't think it's real but yeah like shows like that or you know anything else I feel like knowledge just educating yourself and and putting yourself in front of these kind of things just being aware can really like help people understand like oh okay not everybody has the same way of growing up you know yeah absolutely is there anything that you just think about in your career that you're like i really want to like do this or i really want to like play this kind of role i love the action hero stuff like i hope to thrive in that 
Um, I do want to dabble in comedy. I just feel like naturally growing up, I was always the person who wanted to make people laugh and just doing silly things. And I didn't care what I looked like and stuff like that. So I really want to dabble in comedy. If I can do it, if there's a role for me and I think it's good for me, I'll, I'll, tr I'll try it out. But um, yeah, comedy is something that makes me like <gasps> excited. That's awesome. This has been a really amazing conversation. I've really enjoyed going through your career and kind of getting that insight. And, you know, you are someone that I, I'm just so proud of because I feel like you're doing so many amazing things. And you, you are so too. I'm so proud of you. Like, literally, we go way back 13, six years ago is when I first talked to you. And now, like, we've both accomplished so much. Like, we are getting it, girl. Yes, we are killing it. Latinas, killing it. Is there anything else you want to share before before we wrap up? I would say catch Stargirl on the CW app. It's free and it's streaming all 13 episodes. Yes. Thank you so much to Yvette for joining me and talking about her career and so much more. I feel like we're just two girlfriends chatting, having some fun. And of course, make sure to check out Stargirl. Consider subscribing if you like my videos and check out more Pop Culture Planet right over here. All right, see ya.